Hello and welcome to the big fight. It's been more than a week now since Narendra Modi's massive election victory, a victory that has seen the BJP grow in strength despite a patchy economic record and social tensions which continue to be a concern. This was an election that saw the BJP emerge as the most preferred party among first-time voters and also the most preferred party among youth cutting across different castes. Yet, there was much shock in the opposition and among India's liberals at the poll results. Many believe Modi's success represents a new aspirational India which is speaking out, making a statement against the old entitled culture that the Congress had come to represent. It's happened not just in India but all over the world which has taken a turn to the right from Trump in the United States to Brexit to the recent EU Parliament elections. Prime Minister Modi stirred up that debate further by talking about the Khan market gang uh, in one of his newspaper interviews, a reference to Delhi's elite. So is it fair to say that Liberals in India have also been living in echo chambers, living in a bubble of their own, or is this Liberal bashing misplaced? What does Narendra Modi's victory this time tell us about a new India? Joining us on the panel this evening, we have journalist and author Sabha Nakvi, author and columnist Shubhrashtra, a political analyst, author and former journalist Ashutosh, theatre personality Amir Raza Hussain, actor Kabir Bedi is joining us from Mumbai tonight and will be joined by the BJP's Bhartendra Singh shortly. We will begin firstly with one minute comments, opening statements by our, all our panellists uh, before we open this up for debate. And Sabha Nakvi, your one minute starts now. Are India's liberals living in a bubble? Uh, Nidhi, it depends on who you mean by liberals. If you're talking about uh, the, the structures that used to live around the regimes of the Congress, there was obviously a patronage structure of a party which ruled India for years and years, then yes. And uh, many of them have not been able to see what is coming, even though it came five years ago also. That is indeed true. And uh, to that extent, yes. <coughs> However, to speak of liberal values as somehow being harmful or uh, without any merit is would be a terrible mistake at the same time it is but you know so that, that is there and to turn it on values which are liberal we can we can have a larger debate if we want to because this is also these debates are relevant in our eco chambers also in the delhi eco chambers we can have a larger debate about the the people who wanted the Congress back, not just for the values, but because the importance that regime gave them. All right. Your, you know? your one minute is up. You'll get a chance to respond to this further. Shubhrashtra, your one minute starts now. Are India's uh, liberals living in a bubble? Uh, Nidhi, I, I would act actually agree with Sabah who exactly comprises uh, these liberals. Because if we were to deconstruct the very meaning of liberalism, it is about accepting the other point of view. And we have seen that in this country, especially when you have a uh, in culture of intellectual patronage, uh, the opinions from dissenting uh, the dis dissenting side are, is never really appreciated. So, um, so I do have a problem with uh, this term liberal and how it has been appropriated by a certain section section of people who have actually been one of the most illiberal of, of uh, uh, you know uh, of the lot. However, I do feel that there are certain values that we as Indians stand by. And to talk about those values, if that is what liberalism is about, then we'll have to rethink on how we are framing the arguments, on which structure are we basing our arguments, what are the selective anecdotes we are picking up, and I think that's where the liberals went wrong. All right. Ashutosh, your thoughts? I think the time has come when we have to openly admit and accept the fact that the liberalism, leftism, and secularism, these three are outdated concepts, and they should, be, they should be buried, and they should be <laughs> accepted as dead. Why I'm saying so? Because there is a simple reason. I think secularism today has become a wrong word. Liberals, I think they failed to understand the tide which has hit India in 2014. And uh, there was a time when even talking, talking about Hinduism, our, talk, our, uh, our, our proclaiming ourselves as a Hindu was, was termed as a communal, uh, communal. So I think that is where the problem lies. The problem is that the liberals and the leftists all together just lived in a, in a, in a shell, in a cocoon. And uh, Mr. Modi, for that matter, is right in that sense that the Khan market, I do not agree with the word Khan there, but the time has come to accept the fact and we have to redefine Indian politics, we have to redefine liberalism, we have to redefine leftism, we have to redefine secularism. Unless we are ready to admit that, I think the road ahead is very, very dark. All right. Mm. Uh, Amir Raza Hussain, you think it's as radical as Ashutosh is making it out to be? So, uh, no, I'm not going to contest what uh, Ashutosh is saying, but what I am going to say is that, again, the definition of liberalism. So, liberals 
are horrified with the threat to institutions, whether it is the uh, Supreme Court, whether it's CBI, whether it's uh, uh, enforcement RBI, director, whatever. whatever, whether it is the election commission. Then uh, liberals are horrified with majoritarianism and dictatorial authoritative rule. Now, there is majoritarianism which has shown itself in this election, but dictatorial rule unfortunately is there in every party, even in UP, in Mayawati's party or in the Congress party. There is this dictatorial tendencies with all our leaders. We need to break out of it. Whether it's even a small party like the Shiv Sena or Sharad Baba. And the third thing... All this right. Your time is up, so you can only say the third thing later. Okay. Bhattendra Singh. <laughs> Uh, I agree with, with all the previous speakers completely that we are, we are completely wrongly defining liberalism in the Indian context. Uh, we need to relook at it. We need to redefine it. Liberalism to me and to most people means that we are looking after the marginalized, the poorest of the poor and uh, making policy for them. Uh, we are looking at countries that have been marginalized and we are making policy for them. We are looking at the world as equal and we want to make uh, you know we want to make space for every country as and as india does and i think nobody has done it better than the previous nda government and i'm sure the policies will continue so redefine liberalism kabir bedi let's get your thoughts on that you have your one minute starts now well i think the liberals were certainly living in a, a bubble and i completely agree that um, I'm getting feedback in my ears which is very distracting to me of my own voice uh, coming late. Can I start again? Please go ahead. Um, Sorry, we'll just fix that. You know, what's bothering me is uh, that, that sorry, good governance won, bad propaganda lost. And essentially, there's a group of liberals that propagated this bad propaganda. I think we all agree that liberals uh, is a very broad term and should not um, be given to every person who opposes Prime Minister Modi because there are many liberals. I'm a liberal, but I support Modi. And therefore, there's a group that grew up sort of in the Congress mindset that wanted to demonize Modi from the day he came to power and look for every excuse, every little incident that had a communal slant to it. Uh, and made it into a story that India had become this communal okay. cauldron, Kabir India Kabir was Kabir being Kabir divided. Kabir and look what hap was done in the international okay. papers. Okay. Rana, you, Batish Tasir, Guardian, all these people made it look as though India was in, 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 in a state of civil war almost between Hindus and Muslims. This okay. just so wasn't true. Kabir Bedi, Bad your, propaganda your one loss, minute is up. Your one minute is up. I'm going to come back to you and actually use what you've just said to open this debate up to what Kabir Bedi said just now, mm -hmm. that was it bad propaganda by some liberals about demonizing the prime minister that, Look. Uh, that created this impression <clears throat> that there is a section of our people today, especially those who subscribe uh, to an anti-BJP point of view, let's say, who are completely out of touch and not able to understand why he's won this election. So, uh, Nidhi, I'd say that everybody is free to interpret things in this way, but Personally, as a very hardcore reporter who's covered the BJP through a long time, who actually covers them, I feel that this, uh, the, to just respond from an identity perspective, sometimes you miss what is happening. You actually miss the many things that are happening on the ground. I think part of the problem, one, we have spoken about the elitism of the old Congress structures. There is this other problem, the left, the influence of the left in intellectual establishments for good reasons. Some of the scholars are very good, but they don't, they have completely blank about cultural idioms. They traditionally don't understand these things. So, you know, I had gone somewhere where there was this analysis happening afterwards and they went on about uh, cap money and capital and all the various things. And I was like out of touch when I said, you must also analyze how Narendra Modi made people feel. Elections on this scale are also about emotions. If you're doing a dissection, so I just found that because people were responding from subject from their own positions, whatever old head position, there was a lack of comprehension. So I, I don't want to pass judgment on anything because there are people who feel completely paranoid 
and you know that's their perspective. You're on Indian TV. You're supposed to pass judgment. No, no I won't. I won't do <laughs> that. I'll pass the baton no, around. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, Ashutosh, when, when Kabir Bedi says that, oh, you know, Atish wrote this piece or Rana wrote that piece, and that just gives this impression, uh, you know, that that India is at civil war. But that is a perspective that they have about certain things that have happened in the last five years, which continue to be a concern in the next five years as well. Uh, but I think the problem comes when people only look at things through that prism and, and don't want to, uh, again I say I still meet people from that sort of liberal space, uh, to say in quotes, who are not able to understand this massive victory for Mr. Modi. No, see, not understanding the massive victory of Mr. Modi, I think there are a lot of people who are still living in the old world. That's the, my premise which I've been saying. I think the problem with the people like Kabir Bedi is <coughs> that they, are, they have become the prisoner of the propaganda. Mr. Modi is not born today. Mr. Modi was born in 2002 as a chief minister. And uh, uh, there is a reason if, if Mr. Modi is, is being criticized so severely. And uh, I think if anybody, say, Mr. Lalki Sadwani was not cr criticized so much. He also belongs to the RSS. Mr. Atal Vyari Bajpayee was not so criticized. He, he also belonged to, belonged to the RSS. There was a time when Lalki Sadwani was, was too criticized into, in 1991-92. But if somebody is saying that Mr. Modi is, has been demonized, maybe a wrong word used, but Mr. Modi should have been criticized after 2002 to, to, to yeah. rights. And uh, it, it, it's not a creation of, of us or somebody else. Uh, uh, Co Congress party still has not been forgiven for the 80, 84 rights. So why BJP is and Mr. Modi are their supporters are, are living in, into a kind of word that no, 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 don't say anything about Mr. Modi because Modi is above, above everything. He, he is, he's, he's the victim. He's not a victim. Let, let's admit the fact he's not a victim. He has used his victim who is as, a, as a beautiful uh, propaganda machine and, and uh, has successfully resurrected himself from being somebody uh, who should be uh, allegedly blamed for 2002 riots in 2014 as a, as a, as a, as a biggest uh, hero in Indian politics. Wait, Kabir Bedi, you want to respond to that? Well, Ashutosh says that are you a prisoner of propaganda yourself? Absolutely, absolutely. I would like to respond to that. I would like to respond to that. Because, um, firstly, I want to make clear, I'm not a spokesman of the BJP. Uh, if uh, Ashutosh remembers, when I got disillusioned with the Congress, I was looking for alternatives. And when Anna Hazare spoke at the Ramlila grounds in Delhi, I flew at my expense from Delhi, from Bombay to Delhi, to speak in favor of Anna Hazare. Because I was so disillusioned with what the Congress was up to. When the whole movement fell apart and Kejriwal went one way and Anna Hazari went the other way, I realized that there was no viable alternative at the national level other than Modi. Modi made a lot of promises, said a lot of good things, had a certain vision of India, and I believed in him and supported in him with hope. Today in 2019, I support him with belief that he did the best he could in the time that he had, and I think he showed great governance and instead of harping back to the 2002 incidents of what happened then, frankly, that's water under the bridge. The Supreme Court investigative team cleared Muslim Modi and the Supreme Court is good enough for me. So I don't want to enter that debate anymore. It's a waste of time. What's important is what the people perceived as Prime Minister Modi's character, the kind of governance he gave, the kind of schemes he launched, the people who got electricity, roads, water, uh, bank accounts, money in their accounts, uh, all kinds of measures that they actually saw benefited their uh, lives Amir Raza and the Hussain intention of the man, <coughs> that's what they voted for. Amir Raza Hussain. So I think somehow this debate has veered around to uh, pro and anti Modi. I don't think that what is the, shock, the you know, that, uh, that's <laughs> yeah. not the debate today. Yeah. We are talking about liberals. <coughs> I want to bring up one point, you see. Yeah. We have a uh, a democracy which is alive and kicking, it's a procedural democracy. It's a functional democracy. But it is a democracy in today's day and age, which is a majoritarianism, uh, which is representing the majority voice overwhelmingly. It may not be a bad thing, but that is the democracy we have. There were, there were a few voices outside the BJP. Inside the BJP, there was this Sakshi Maharaj or something who went around saying, that this is the last election. No, this is not the last election. It will never be the last election. And uh, I must say this for uh, the much maligned election commission, and I was one of the people who was uh, uh, anti the election commission. After the results with this VAPT counting in one assembly constituency, 
nobody has objected nobody none of the uh, people who've lost no congressman no, has uh, uh, come out and said that uh, look these results uh, the the slip results don't match the overall result now that is a great for for a liberal that's a victory of democracy for for me as a liberal i misjudged uh, uh, the chief election commissioner i thought uh, 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 mr uh, sunil uh, Aroda. Aroda was uh, uh, not on the right side, but today as a liberal, I have to appreciate the man has done a fabulous job. He has killed forever this debate of using the machine, which is a phenomenal not every thing. Liberal agrees no, with you. No, Sorry? No, 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 they don't. No, they don't. I'm yeah. talking about myself. Yeah. I'm talking about myself. I think the debate is buried because nobody in the opposition, no serious uh, person from the opposition, has come and said, no, no, in my election, my results did not match the uh, slip county so that's one thing second thing is what what we have a what most liberals have a problem with is hypernationalism we have a problem with jingoism we uh, have a problem with any kind of populist gesture we have a problem with authoritarian issues now and the other thing is that our liberalism is limited to an English speaking, uh, we can't use the Khan, Khan market. market. Well, <laughs> I refuse what to. do you use? Lodi, Jim Khan. No, which is so unfair. I mean, uh, you said Jim Khan Lodi Lodi elite. Jim, Lodi Lodi so, it's so unfair because Khan market is actually not elite as, 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 as you look at the history of the market. Yeah, I know. But you have a it point. You but, have but you know, so it's the, the liberals have to, mm -hmm. and you know what I object to is what the Congress has done, the so, soft Hindu, to, hard yeah, Hindu. To, yeah. We need to, and I don't mean we as the Congress, I have nothing, uh, but we as liberals and the opposition, whoever follows liberal values, needs to go out into the masses in Hindi, in Telugu, in Tamil, in uh, Bhojpuri, communicate liberalism as we see it to the masses and <laughs> then you can expect victory. So Not following uh, pale again, shadow so of Rasha, Mr. Modi. What, what, what Amir Raza Hussain said, that I mean, liberals as he sees them are those who will have a, an issue with authoritarianism or hyper-nationalism. And perhaps that's what, for instance, a Atish's piece, uh, which Kabir Bedi criticized, was sort of encapsulating how he saw the last five years and some of the, many of the incidents that had happened. Are those not valid concerns, you think, that people should raise? I mean, that, that's a good thing to raise and a good thing to stand up and fight against. I agree with you, Nidhi. The only thing is... The, uh, so these days, people are also looking at people who are trying to raise these valid concerns. Now, you have an opposition leader who goes and stands with the students of JNU, who raised certain slogans and was it's a part of public liberalism record. So then, with sir, allow me, please allow me to. No, I mean, sorry, I actually agree ahead. with you, but I I just want to bring in let some. Please go ahead. Yeah, let her finish. Yeah. Please go ahead. The critique of the critique of jingoism, secularism, populism. These words have been used uh, here on the panel basically comes as a reaction. Nobody disagrees that we should not be a, a, you know, a sober country which believes in a nuanced debate. I mean, historically, we have been a nation which has believed in a nuanced, balanced perspective. But what do you do when historical injustice is done, not, not just to an ideology, but to incidents which are as recent as the violence in Samajwadi Party ruled Uttar Pradesh government? I mean, the doyance of secularism kept absolutely mum there. The doyens of secularism were absolutely mum when Ankit was uh, uh, murdered by a group of certain section of minorities in, in this country. People see through this hypocrisy, Nidhi, today. We may not agree on this panel, but they do. Now, something was said, one of the panelists mentioned that liberalism is dead. So, liberalism is not dead. The, there has been a death of the narrative of certain illiberals who have cloaked their narrative in very, you know, have sugar-coated their narrative. The other thing is Mr. Modi was not born in 2002 even politically. Mr. Modi was born way decades it's before 2002. Figurative. It is just that some journalists did not choose to dis uh, decipher the, uh, the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law equation on a prime time. Just that. So this is a historical injustice that I'm talking about. You and I may not be vocal about it, but there are people on social media today who have taken up this mantle to sort of balance out the narrative.
So okay, I think so Ashutosh and Bharti, interesting. Yeah. Ashutosh, Ashutosh. See, I think that the, uh, the the problem is much deeper. And why I'm saying so, the problem is not about the BJP. Problem is not about the about the RSS. Their narrative, their narrative, their narrative has been since 1925. The, the, that narrative there, and the whole world knew this. The problem with the liberalism is that the, the the liberalism has failed to understand the power of religion. They have not been able to understand that. They have they have and in. In that context, you say, for me, liberalism, secularism, and the leftism, it has become synonymous in a way. The liberals have to understand the, the power of the religion. The real liberal has to understand and define and redefine the Hindu-Muslim relationship. It's not black and white relationship. But in the last 70 years, they have shamelessly gone and appeased, uh, done a policy of uh, Muslim appeasement. Unless you accept that, unless you accept that secularism is, does not mean the negation of religion. Secularism does not mean a rejection of, of religion. Unless we accept that, how will we move forward? I am I'm appalled to say when, when Rahul Gandhi goes to the temple, everybody says he's, he's adopting soft Hindu. No, that's not soft Hindu. It's, it's better to be a religious and you can be secular as well as religious both. Mahatma Gandhi's uh, definition of secularism, Mahatma Gandhi's politics was not religious politics. He, it was a secular politics, but he was a Hindu per se. Sapa, and he, sapa, on a sapa. daily basis. So I must say, Nidhi, that I find it fascinating that people are thrashing around trying to figure out what's happening and finding new ways of trying to analyze it. What is happening right right now is that the Nehruvian model that we believed in has has been it's it's being frayed and it's now appears to have been fully buried that is what is the crisis right now so one is blaming I entirely disagree with uh, Ashutosh's formulations I entirely mostly disagree with Ami Raza Hussain there but I don't want to take on these battles I no, really no, believe do. people That's are trying to I entirely I mean for you suddenly to come here and say that secularism was appeasement Secularism was a badly conceived. The whole problem began in the Rajiv Gandhi era when they overturned the Shabano judgment and he exactly. played to clerics. Yes. That is what it was. And then after that, that, that is when the problem began, when they started to cater to clerics. As a value, secularism is a very good value. But to just, uh, you know, dump these very broad values and to put it like that in a program is, I don't think, the right way to go. And uh, many liberals, as I think the gentleman on the corner said, Anybody who speaks up for the poorer sections of society, I give a damn about my right or anybody's right to be in Khan market or not. Anyone who raises voices <laughs> for Good people restaurants. who are, can I finish, who are marginalized, I care much more about that. And that is one of the things, as, a politi as an observer of political science, so the BJP regime is, of course, they exclude many people. I agree with that. However, what we miss to see is the inclusion. The secret saw exactly. is... We exactly. missed to see the inclusion exactly. of the other. You uh, know? And Bhartender Singh, mm -hmm. I come to ask this: is 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 that the biggest problem that people? you know, on the other side of the political divide, didn't see that inclusion. When you look at the data of how people have voted, I, I said it right <coughs> in the beginning, we have those graphics. You know, young people across castes have voted for, for Mr. Modi. Uh, first time voters in larger numbers have voted for Mr. Modi. What explains that? At the end of the day, uh, a lot of those on the other side of the ideological divide are not, you know, they, they just missed that. They completely misread the mood. Uh, so I agree with you completely. What happened was that uh, all the policies for the poor were implemented without any uh, differentiation that is done. I'm from UP and I'm, I've been in electoral politics since very long. Uh, the Samajwadi party was in power. They made sure that the development and, and all the policies only went to their voters. When the Bahujan Samaj party came to power, they did the same. But when the BJP and the Modi government was in power, it was only for the poor. The lists were not made in, uh, in Modi's government. The lists were made in 2011. But those lists, the poverty, the BPL lists, the below poverty line lists, all the beneficiaries were people who were not traditionally BJP voters. And therefore, this was the first time that, it, that people looked at the poor as poor. And a lot of, there was a lot of complaint from the Garda at the bottom that these people never voted for us. But Mr. Modi was strict about it. The Prime Minister was sure that they had to be helped. We had to reach out to the poor and help them. And that's what, what and, you're saying. And so that this is, is what, what is he missed. So this is what everybody missed. That's what everybody missed. Everybody exactly. missed. The other thing I, I would no, like to yeah. add is, yeah. I think, I think the whole, the whole, the, the, uh, I think the nationalist school has finally come of age. You know, there were times when, when we were in college, and I'm happy to see most of us 
including Kabir are from the same college. <laughs> uh, you know, all the Which nationalist writers uh, were, were just when you brushed say, aside. I when you, you, when know, you say college, uh, it's only one yeah, college. Yeah, then I'm also we, from they that weren't even, They weren't even accommodated, uh, you know, if you, if you wanted no, so, to talk but, about you know, Didi Savarkar and Kote, you know, it was considered there's, there's completely There's clearly wrong. a case here that, that sort of how we loosely define liberal India as this as the sort of ideological uh, sort of uh, uh, opposition to the BJP. Uh, but Kabir Bedi, when, when you criticize, say, Rana Ayub's writings in international papers or what Atish Tasi wrote, as I was asking Shubhrashtra as well, these are valid concerns of governance in the last five years. We can't, you know, the, the people who raise those issues can't close their eyes to, you know, uh, to lynchings, to hate speech, and all of these went up dramatically after 2014. <clears throat> Does that make those liberals intolerant or disconnected uh, with you know the, uh, with with what the majority thinks i mean sure the majority has voted in a certain way but it doesn't mean you take your eye off what may be happening to the minorities no absolutely you know any single incident of communal violence or uh, death as a result of communal tensions is sad it's deplorable and it's terrible fact is that in a country of 1.2 billion people, there are going to be instances of lawlessness. There are going to be instances of people going out of hand. There are going to be people that feel empowered in some way and go out and do terrible things. But if you look at the narrative in a wider perspective and say X number of incidents took place in a population this large, statistically, they honestly become insignificant. And when stories are woven out of this to but say that the whole country is in the grip of fear that Narendra Modi will be uh, elected, the whole country is divided, to paint this kind of picture of gross exaggerations okay, of what is actually happening oh. in India, that's what's wrong with the narrative. Is now, it a gross exaggeration? No, uh, Sabha, sorry, Sabha wants to inter intervene on what you just said. I want to say that to hold out, though, to is based out, on secularism. It's based on secularism. One second, Mr. Bedi, and because the, Sabha I just wants to intervene on that point. Uh, Mr. Bedi, if I may and I'll come back to you on I just want to hold point. out that you cannot, I disagree, you know, you cannot hold out a few bylines and say, why did they do this? They have a right to perceive things in the way they want to. So I stand up, I mean, uh, for their right to, to say all this. I do think, I would, my, I, there is of course a concern, there is no Absolutely. Muslim elected MP in a Absolutely. country which has but the third me, Sabha, largest me, Muslim say, population. Say they have of course, right you know, are they, those are concerns. No question, and I no disagree, Nidhi, but, that we should keep on naming. if they make this naming, out to be the principal uh, issue huh? of the election, they are wrong. If they make this out to be the principal issue, I suppose. See, Nidhi, uh, let me again reiterate, with no disrespect to Kabir Bedi, I think Kabir Bedi has to come out of his house and go to the go to the places and meet people. CSDS has recently come out in a post-poll survey and it has very clearly said that India is divided between the, between the majority community and the minority community. And you see the, the percentage of people who have voted like Muslims, Christians and the Sikh, all three minority communities, how much they have voted to BJP? None of them has voted more than 20%. And the, overwhelmingly the, the Hindus have voted. So in which world Kabir Bedi is living in, I do not, I fail to understand. That's what I'm saying. He's a prisoner He's of the propaganda. Also. He's a prisoner of the propaganda and it's better that he should understand that. It's not about a one I, minor I, I, issue I about, think, about, about issue, no, Kabir let me, let, me just with, um, Kabir sahab, let me complete. It's not about one minor incident. When Akhlaq is killed on the basis of his religion, please. the whole country has a reason to be to stand up and condemn and criticize. And the prime minister of the country sleeps for 10 days and waits the, the president of this I country, Pranam Mukherjee, to criticize this. I think then I have a problem and I have an issue with that. My, my issue is entirely different. Nidhi. When I was talking about the liberalism is that I am saying the Indian, Indian anglicized the liberals Anglicized. Yeah. liberals, how many of them have a good, a deep study of Shankaracharya? How many of them has understood Ramanuja Acharya? They, are, they flaunt that they have studied Kant, Hegel, Marx, Lenin. They have, they have completely cut off from the root. So and I'm that is the problem Shankar. with the Indian, Indian secularism. <laughs> That's a problem I mean, with Indian Hussain secularism. Has Mao has said, yes. Mao, Mao, Mao used leftism, but he used okay. Chinese. First, first let me get Kabir Bedi to respond to your attack token, on him. And then I come to Shubhrashtra. How many Indian Kabir liberals Bedi. have clearly identified and defined secularism? Sorry, Kabir Bedi, you wanted to make a point. Secularism yeah. has many, many forms. You know, uh, in, the, in the Western societies, uh, secularism is seen as equality of religions and one rule and one law, one system of laws governing all communities. Our secularism is different. Let me add one interesting yes, point here. Secularism the word secular was inserted into the Indian constitution by, by Indira Gandhi, Gandhi yeah. in 1976 
during the emergency and India instead of being a sovereign democratic republic was made into a sovereign democratic secular republic. Socialist. And what this secularism is has to be clearly understood and defined because secularism like the word God I'd is different like things to, to different people. To and therefore when we talk about secularism and the divide in the country because of it, we must understand what secularism we are talking about. So, well, may mean, I respond uh, to that? Yeah, okay. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, of course, secularism has taken on a different uh, tone and a different ethos in country, and secularism means different things in different places of the world. But one thing which secularism means all over the world is equality, and you can't change that. So the rest of it is all fluff. Equality? Equality. Yeah, but in, I think in Indian religion? culture, it is Sarva Dharma Sambhav. I think that's how Gandhi has defined, that's how the Vedas yeah, has defined. I, I think that equality. should be the real, real so ethos of which, which also in its trucks it's will be mean equality. I'm sorry, but this whole talk about how left doesn't have an understanding of culture, and then somebody goes on to say that secular has been a part of our lexicon, it has not been. We have dharm has been a part of our lexicon. You have a concept where you respect other religions, you t don't tolerate the other religion. This fear mongering and this toxic misappropriation of the word secularism to further a very toxic and divisive agenda by a group of entitled illiberals in the country has reduced this entire debate to an akhlaq versus chandan controversy where we see that the akhlaq question, I mean here is a journalist who has written a book who doesn't perhaps know what happened, I mean what, have, what have been the recent findings in the whole akhlaq case. My problem is really not with people standing up for certain values. My problem is cherry picking of selective narratives, which is why they have been defeated in the elections so badly. People do not buy this hypocritical stuff. I'm telling it out to you. The, I mean, just look at the response on social media to the debate today. And you can't say that social media does not reflect the collective uh, ambition and aspiration of the people. You may have problem with the polarized narrative it has, but there is a, some, some valid truth out there. The other point which I want to bring to uh, the table is Time magazine, after publishing that piece, uh, uh, and I don't agree with, with, the, uh, with BJP going on and making a brauha about yeah. it. I mean, somebody wrote an article yeah, exactly. and the other yeah, person exactly. is totally yeah. entitled yeah. to write an article. You write a counter article. The point is, I'm just coming to the point of media. Time magazine had the intellectual humility to publish a counter piece on the very same platform. How many media houses in this country, Nidhi, would have the intellectual humility to do so? On a daily basis, yes. You have to no, just, I, I just follow the newspapers. Living, you are still yeah. living in a bubble. Where no, you no, no, I'm not living in the bubble. Kind of I'm sorry, I'm not living in the bubble. But, but it's, what it's there all but the time. Maybe I just want to make, make yeah. a small point. I think. Let us finish. Let us just one more point. Again, this whole question of majority and minority. I mean, I was working in Ladakh prior to, I mean, the latest assignment was Ladakh. None of the so called liberals in this country ever raised any editorial question on how the Muslims in Turtuk village, which were the latest entrant to the Indian nation state, have been completely marginalized by the NC, by the PDP, by the Congress. Which political leader went and campaigned there? Ram Madhav. The, he comes from BJP, he comes from the Saffron Agenda, Sangha Parivar. The point I'm trying to make is, these definitions have completely dismantled on ground. You have a Buddhist chief minister today in Arunachal Pradesh. He is a you minority. Don't have a and it goes Muslim MP in the BJP, though. There are 303 MPs, not one is Muslim uh, in the Lok Sabha. So, Nidhi, either. One in 351. So, Nidhi, are we going to then take this discussion to how many tickets were given? No, no. Because then I'll. Then, then let's also I, talk about. Because how we're many not getting into a debate on Hindu Muslim here, but since you're making that point, I am pointing out to you the fact no, that there's also no. Nidhi, yeah. I think so this liberalism and Hindu built. Muslim should what? be separate. Uh, separate no. uh, no, compartments. Mr. Hussain, no, I'm just I, I saying, what so. I'm just saying is that Ashutosh, Ashutosh. See, I do not, the I, majority in the minority community, where, where is the talk on the other micro minorities? Why? The tribals yeah. of this country. How many tribals voted for the Congress the, the, and the other regional okay, parties? First, 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 I think, I think first, of, first of all, yeah. it has to be made very clear that whether, they, whether the, she considers that tribals are also not part of the Hindu fold. If that is, then I think yeah. it's a welcome, well, 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 welcome on the on part of the RSS or something like that. No, you you, you, you said no. that minority. If you are, mean are Hinduism as a religion, so let, me, no. let me complete. If you mean Hinduism as a way so of Brassel, life, let absolutely. Me so, Brassel, let me let me complete. I think, uh, how will you believe this? 
you go on the street and you realize that there is a clear divide between between the majority and the minority. You don't have to. You go and interact with the uh, with, with the minority in this country. We realize how scared they are. You need the problem to... is. Let me complete. The yes, problem yes. is that the RSS wants to impose its its schizophrenia yes. on this country. You read their history, 1200 years history. What happened in the in, in 700 centuries or the 800 centuries? None of my business. I today I want wow. my employment. I want I want my history to be written in the proper perspective. The I and I'm the one. I'm the one person who immediate who said that liberalism has a problem in this country. Now, if you want to tell me that liberalism, everything is wrong with the liberalism and everything right with the, with the RSS and the Hindu ideology, sorry, I have a problem with that. So you have to accept the fact that today the minorities are living in fear, literal fear. I, Don't I'm impose sorry. your Shabha, schizophrenia you on this country. This government and this country. No, no, I worry, I worry answer. for, look, uh, I, I have a different thesis, but I don't want to use that, you know. I, uh, uh, Nidhi, I, I believe that the real crisis comes from the fact that during the founding of the independence of India, there was a partition when Nidhi. Pakistan became Nidhi. became an Islamic Nidhi. country. Nidhi. There was a separate, we were, suppo we were the founders of India at that time, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, Gandhi and all, said India will be a secular republic. However, this is much before the BJP came to power. This is also indeed true that secularism began to be a sort of tokenism. Vote herding, vote collection, exactly. making these, putting, giving the clerics importance. You treat Muslims as if they're people in a museum who will come and vote for you. All that That's the Congress, Congress did. In Bengal, for All example. of that the Congress has done. The problem, the, the, the parties which have been very, very badly let down, and even the left had this problem, <coughs> their leaderships were made of elites. Cast, the left had the most sort of high caste elites running their leadership. Still All do. of these things have happened. And the uh, Congress. So now, so the crisis right now, there is obviously a concern in a, in a healthy democracy, all Indians should be represented. I still, but I do not live in see, fear, Ashutosh, see, and don't put that on me. No, no I'm not putting on you. I'm talking about, about the, about the no, minorities I, I interact I with. Also, on a daily no, basis. no, I will say this. I, I have written pieces also on this. When you go no, to no, areas. I'm not talking about you per se, Sabha. No, Please don't take it that me. way. I cover no, no, a lot. No, no, no. no. Because, because I have also interacted and I have many, many friends okay. in the minority communities and I can vouch for them and I can tell you on, no, on your face. Nobody is happy with on, the verdict. But to use the fact is, the fact is. Randomly. No, let me speak. I mean, let me speak. Surely, I have a yes. right to say please, this. Please, to please. use the fear, and there is there is a sort of disillusionment. There is some level of grief. There, my grandfather was a freedom fighter. There is a level of grief. He's passed away now. But to say that everybody is living fearfully is also is not true. It's a, I've written about it. You go to places like Muradabad and all. People are not fearful. They tell me, Madam Ji, aap parishan mat ho. Ye people are not Ashutosh, fearful. They want representation. From what the narrative you're speaking of? No, no, no. I, I, I stand by every word I said because I've been interacting well, on I a would, daily basis and why I'm saying so because while writing my book I had an extensive survey and extensive research with them spoke to more than uh, 500 people on, on the issue and that's why I can tell you to, and there are the people who are planning to to, to leave their places, they are, they are planning to go certain places. I'm not getting into that. The fact is, the Sabha, what I'm not in, uh, no, intended at what she is saying. To it. But there is a nuance to it. But it's not nuance. Huh? Sabha, please accept this fact. It's not nuance at all. Yeah? I, it's I, not nuance. Why should I accept it? Because is, you have decided. Yes. No, no, I mean, that no. is not decided. That I'm fearful. Okay, no. I'm, I'm going to weigh in on the side of Ashutosh. There is, to my mind, there is uh, a huge fear amongst the minority community, especially in the north. I don't know about the south, but in Uttar Pradesh, in, in, in Bihar, there is a huge, uh, well, there's no dissolution. There's, there is a fear that what is Oh, There is a fear. And I think uh, the Prime Minister has really taken the first step uh, in the last few days. I got a piece of him talking about Ramzan and thing, things like this. So I think there is a realization in the uh, 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 BJP also that there is this fear and that fear needs to be addressed. And I hope they can address it in a more successful manner than it my, was addressed my, in my the My question life. isn't so much about the BJP today. It yeah. is more about the other side of the political divide. The other side when of the political when, divide when you, is not concerned. Uh, no, exactly. So when, that, when these are legitimate issues that have to be raised, Amir Raza Hussain, the problem is the way in which they are raised or they're not raised they're at not all. Raised. Do you remember, for instance, when the lynchings were happening in Rajasthan, when the first, uh, the Pehlu Khan incident happened, for instance, I remember the Congress party did not even send no. representatives no. to come. 
come to TV studios to talk about Not it. They talk. didn't no. want to get into a debate about no. it. So who are the real political liberals in our country who will actually stand up for these liberal values where but you're talking? What you have here? here? That's it. That's so, it. I mean, politically, who? Well, they're, they're individuals in, no. in every party. Here's one from the BJP. Here's Bhat one. Bhatendra Singh? Huh? Bhat so Indra there Singh? is a, I, I've been wanting to get the sense that whenever there was a lynching, there was, they were booked under the regular, uh, booked under the required uh, Criminal Procedure no, no. Act. I, or, I, I, uh, I can throw back all the cases, at, you know, that, that are under, that's not up. the debate here. The people here. were locked up, uh, they, the cases are going on, that is the, that is the system, that is the law. And the law that has been true, followed, but and I'm not it getting will into be a debate followed. On lynching with you. It will be followed. So there can be anxiety that the that the BJP has won 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 the state as well as the uh, as well as the no, centre. One, 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 one in most of the in most of the northern 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 northern. Sabha, Sabha, if Sabha can answer. Let me, no, let me, I, yeah, you know, Nidhi, but ever you since the BJP has come into power, there has been no riot in any BJP ruled state. In, I, um, I want to just put this record. I, I want to put this. There are legitimate concerns, values. and you know me Caste how concerned we are about any injustice, any violence. Of course, minorities are not getting represented right now. But I take strong objection to anybody walking up to me and patronizing me and other people, and they also don't like it. That is a, it almost it gets Generalization. to the point of offensiveness. That Absolutely. you are all the scared people of India, and that is the, that is the problem with this narrative. Of course, people are concerned; they have a right to be concerned. But I also have a right to say I am not scared. But you is know, and I'm part of the problem. Is part of the problem, you know? This verdict. And not many people will tell you. Also, let me ask Kabir Bedi about this. Kabir Bedi, you know? is this verdict also at the end of the day? Uh, a verdict against, as I said right at the beginning, against it's an aspirational India that's sort of fighting back against the elitism uh, and and the old order, and that old order isn't able to accept it. Uh, that's true in a way. But when you say the old order, you mean the the the, the people that were uh, basically of the Congress uh, point of view. Well, yeah, the Congress uh, represents it. It's kind of feudal and, and when you have a dynasty that yeah. You know, a dynasty that heads a political party, it's a very feudal sort of yes, yes. setup. There was, there was they certainly, represent there was that certainly more than rebellion anyone against else. that. And I think just coming back to the, to the basic, basic point here, that, that if there was fear in the country, I don't believe it was due to anything that Prime Minister Modi did or the BJP we did as a party. Modi, if anything, uh, it was a result of the enormous publicity given to each single incident that happened no, the, the, that, that should have legitimate people and can do blown what out of like, all huh? proportion to string together a story of an India that didn't exist uh, or if it did exist in a very small manner it was blown out of proportion and what mattered to people was not this issue that 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 inflamed and incensed all the liberals and they tried to make the uh, a mountain out of a molehill but they tried to the people looked at the larger picture and said what has happened in these five years who has worked for me? What are the benefits Mr. I've Bedi, got? Mr. Bedi, what I've you're saying is a mountain out of a molehill is 40 Muslims angry with Modi at certain policies, but when the, on the balance, the key word is the on the balance, years, people supported Modi because they wanted to end just the old system. Sure, uh, but I'm saying you know, it's not uh, a mountain Nidhi, out can of a molehill. I just have one yeah. word in? Yeah. You know, Aristotle defines fear as that feeling that looming presence is coming and you cannot control what will happen. To that extent, people are worried. The, if you're talking about minorities, they are not in control because they're not there with the dispensation that electoral but democracy has thrown up. That it's all been, I mean, no, I, I completely disagree. How can you? I completely disagree with him. He, people have every it? right to flag the issues that they choose to flag. You cannot tell people that no, you are what not are concerned. You flagging? I, mean, I mean, take a stand, Sabha. It's, it's like, finally take a stand and say, not 40 Muslims were killed in the last five years. No, no, of course I've taken a stand on that. Is this a mountain out of a molehill? No, no, of course I have taken a stand on that repeatedly. But to paint that, uh, Mr. Mr. Bedi is of the view that you just, you should not be writing these pieces. I defend those who write them. They have every right to write them. Shubhra, you know? Yes, Nidhi, the problem is not with people flagging Of course they have every right to write them. But at the end of the day, there has to be a word called on the balance. The electorate saw things on the balance and voted no, overwhelmingly the it's about in liberals. favor of Modi because that's what they no, saw. Why don't we bring every argument, 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 argument back to so the Prime Minister? You know? <laughs> because this is an election that's about him, Shubhraj Shah. Yes. Uh, so election so was about, this discussion is about liberalism. Are it it's related so to the election Ms. only. Mr. Hussain, I'll tell you how it is related. 
when Nidhi mentions 40 Muslims have been killed systematically over a period of 5 years, there is a section of viewers, readers and people who genuinely are concerned about India and it larger values it stands for, who feels absolutely marginalized when other issues of Dalits being killed by Muslims are not raised. I am not saying it sh whether it should be discussed or not discussed, but people, what Kabir Bedi talk, uh, Kabir Bedi put, put, put it as balance, I would want to put it out as editorial propriety. You don't mention that Muslims were killed by Hindus, because if you do, no, then I'll you, you must the mention. Shubrasha. Shubrasha, if I may interrupt, Muslims are killed because they are Muslims. Let's understand that. If people get killed in violence, no, you are killing somebody because they're wearing it. So there is a subtle difference. If there is random violence and the and the you know respond? the thing, you 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 understand. Okay, let's yeah. respond. Yeah. yeah. So the, this incident that I'm talking about, hmm. Sabha, happened in a tribal uh, you know, in a tribal dominated area hmm. where a group of Muslims killed Dalits because they choose not to convert. What I'm trying to say is that there are all Which these place? toxic Vicious Where? narratives. Ashutoshi, please do some research after the program. No, no, can I ask? Uh, it's a legitimate no, no. question. Can I please complete answer? my argument uh. before satisfying your intellectual query? No, no, no. I will do I that. I mean, I, I commit. I'm asking. I commit that I will also correct the factual errors in your book. But no, no, after that's the a different show. thing altogether. Anyway, all right. The book Nidhi, is open. So the book, point you can is correct whatever the point it is, is the point that I'm trying to make is that instances of violence are horrendous. They should not be happening. But in case they that they and and they are a part of our society. It's not that suddenly India has become divisive. As a society divisive. at granular, you know, village level, Sorry. people have lived in peace and people have had cultural civilizational conflict. Let's just accept it as it is. All right. The point is how do we how do we address it as intelligent quick, quick class editorial See, people? Da, See, really it's very easy to just brush aside issues. When the community is called termite, when they are painted as an internal enemy, there are the n number of books written on this. How they have tried to, uh, they have already taken Pakistan, now they are trying to, have, half the Kashmir is taken and now they are marching towards the Assam. There is a book, there is a book, there is a literature how available. How do liberals raise these issues without the problem getting is, boxed in? The problem is, the liberals have not read Savarkar. That's a problem. The problem is, what Savarkar thinks about, about, about. It. <laughs> about about uh, so about about <laughs> history. What is his opinion okay. about Muslims? What is his opinion about uh, about everything? They have not read it. They have not read Gal Golwalkar. So it is no, uh, now they don't know how to confront it. They don't know how Amir to Azad? how to counter Amir RSS viewpoints. RSS, uh, 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 have you not understood the RSS viewpoint? No, no. I understand the RSS viewpoint uh, very well. In fact, I, I don't know if you if you remember in one of your shows, <coughs> we had a couple of RSS people and nobody would could sing Vandeir Mataram except me. And I sang the full thing. Well, yeah, I recited on, the Yeah, he sang on our show. Yeah, he sang the full yeah, 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 he yeah sang the whole thing. And <laughs> <laughs> I will not ask you to do that again. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. I've done it once. I can no, move I, it. So please. So she's being I honest. Can, I, I'll yeah. tell you one thing. Liberalism has to reinvent itself. Correct. We have to, we have to get off our... As much as I hate to do that and hate to use the word our elitist, uh, uh, well, uh, coffee shops and, and uh, what no have you. No Khan market for you. No, I don't. You <laughs> Khan, Khan market is not even elitist. Yeah. It has some I know, I was going to say that the Khan word is used because there is a word called K H A N. Let's accept this. Uh, so, no, 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 <laughs> so, anyway. There's also so, a word called Latians media. Okay, just a sec. Just a sec. Latians again is C H R I S T I A N. Oh, my God. Okay, so let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Uh, so, what I'm saying is that we need to, if we need to survive, and I'm sure we want to survive and we need to survive, we need to change the language of our narrative. We need to understand the thought process of the people we want to approach and we need to speak to them in their tongue. Enough of debating within ourselves. We are preaching to the converted. Yeah. The we are already converted. Chambers. We have to convert whether it is BJP, whether it is Congress, whether it is Samajwadi, we have to convert them to a view of liberalism in their own language, in the vernacular, and get them to understand liberal values and understand that this is good for them. 
I, and can I say, and as, for the as whole we country. Up, uh, I, I would like the <coughs> final comment as we wrap up this show that one thing I've seen over the last five years is these sort of very black and white positions uh, taken on both sides of the ideological divide. And yes, you know, when you say there are illiberal liberals, Shubhrashtra, she's absolutely right. I mean, even today, I have people who write to me on Twitter and say, why do you have an RSS representative on your show? Why do you have a BJP? I mean, Come on, you may not agree with their ideology, but you have to listen to all perspectives. And I would uh, uh, you know, appeal to the same to the other side, uh, to the right, uh, to the BJP, to the RSS. You may not like what everyone says. You, everyone doesn't have to agree with you, but please listen to what the other side has to say. Unfortunately, that nuance is completely missing yeah, in our discourse. What fun would it be without uh, what fun, two yeah, sides? Well, we wouldn't have a big fight then if you, yeah. if you, if you, uh, if you had that. Thank you very much Thank to you. all of you Thank for joining Thank us you. tonight. We'll see you again next week. Good night.